So the main theorem that we proved in, in the previous lecture was that to check if a subspace of Rn is compact, it's enough to check that the subspace is closed and bounded. And as an application of this, we proved that SON is compact. So in the previous lecture, we proved that a subspace Y of Rn is compact if and only if y is closed and bounded. Right? And as an application, we saw that SON is compact. Right? Similarly, we can prove that we can prove that O n, U n, S u n are compact. So slight modifications of the proof that S o n is compact will show us that O n, the group of unitary matrices and special unitary matrices, these are all compact. Okay. So today we will, in this lecture, we will see, we will first uh, study how compact compactness behaves with respect to continuous maps. So let's begin with this proposition. Okay, so let me just write that. So behavior of compactness with respect to continuous maps. So we begin with this proposition. Let f from x to y be a continuous map right so the image of a compact set of a compact subset is compact okay so let's prove this so let Z contained in X be compact. So then we need to show that F of Z is compact. Okay. So uh, let us assume that. So let me make a remark. To show that, uh, to show that f of z, or rather a subspace, a subspace is compact. It is enough to show that if y prime is contained in a cover ui, where ui is open in in y, then y prime is contained in a finite cover. So we have seen this already uh, on two occasions before. So let's just prove this. This is easy. So suppose y prime is compact. Right? And y prime, we are given that y prime is contained in this in this cover ui's. So this implies that y prime is equal to this is an open cover for y primes. And since y prime is compact, so this implies that 
y prime is equal to there is a finite indexing set u i j which implies that y prime is contained in union u i j. Right. Conversely, suppose uh, y prime has this property conversely Uh, suppose y prime has the above property, has the property that if we put y prime, if y prime is contained in an open cover where u i is are open subsets of y and not of y prime, then it is contained in a finite subcover. Uh, then let us show that. we show that pi prime is compact as follows right first let us take let y prime be equal to union i in i w i be an open cover of y prime now y prime has a subspace topology which means that each w i is equal to y prime intersected u i for some u i open in y right. So, uh, this implies that y prime is contained in union i in i u i which implies that it is contained in because it has this property u i j which implies that y prime is equal to j equal to 1 to n w this implies y prime is compact right. So, we will repeatedly use this remark. So, if you want to show that a subspace is compact we will show that every time it is contained in an open cover it is contained in a finite subcover of that open cover right. So, uh, we need in our case we need to show that f of z is compact. So, suppose f of z is contained in an arbitrary union let us say v i's where v i is open in y right. So, then we have z is contained in this cover i in i f inverse of v i and since f is continuous this is open in x yeah and as z is compact uh, there is a finite set so z is contained in ij which implies f of z is contained in vij thus f of z is compact. So, this completes a provable proposition. Okay, and we will prove the following lemma. So, the following proposition is very useful. proposition that f from x to y be a bijective continuous map if x is compact then f is a homeomorphism ok. So, proof. So, to show that f is a homeomorphism uh, 
it is enough to show so since f is bijective and continuous yeah it is enough to show that the image of an open subset is open right and uh, which happens if and only if the image that's an easy check and I leave it to you of a closed subset is closed. Yeah. So we will show this. Right. So let Z containing X be a closed subset. Then as X is compact, this implies Z is compact. Uh, this is because we have proved that closed subspace of a compact space is compact which implies that f of z is compact which implies that so once again uh, we are under the hypothesis that all our spaces are host of so in a host of space a compact subspace is closed right so f is a bijective continuous map and it takes closed sets to closed sets from this we can easily conclude that it takes open sets to open sets so or in any case uh, from this we conclude we easily conclude that f is a homeomorphism okay so uh, before we start a discussion on, so this was a very general discussion on compactness and before we start a discussion on compact metric spaces, how compactness, how we can, so just as earlier in case of metric spaces, we had given a special description of uh, closed subspaces, how we had described, we had explained how to describe closed subspaces and how to describe continuous maps between metric spaces. So in, in case of compactness also, we can make some comments when our space is a metric space. Uh, but before we go on to that, we will uh, state this following very important theorem, which we will not prove. Let xi be compact topological spaces. For i in i, so this capital I is now an infinite possibly infinite index set then this product xi obviously this is being given the product topology is compact so this is called Tikhonov's theorem and we will not prove this in this proof may be found in Munkreis. Uh, so we will end this lecture here.